A typical day for a broker involves a lot of different tasks and wearing a lot of different hats. Most people believe that once you've completed everything you need to legally open and operate your brokerage, that it's all downhill from there. Unfortunately, that's when the work really begins. And in this video, we'll take you through a typical day in the life of a freight broker. Getting an early start on your day is the best place to begin. You would be amazed at how much time people waste between arriving at work and actually beginning to work. Our only advice here, be aware of when you actually start working. It doesn't really matter when you sit down at your computer if you're gonna spend the first hour of the day catching up on social media. Well, now that we have our coffee and we've logged into our battle stations, everything's set up, let's discuss what we'll be attacking first. And the first thing on our to-do list is to make sure nothing's happened overnight that we need to be aware of. So you'll be getting in the habit of checking all of your voicemails and emails that arrived since you've wrapped up your day yesterday. Many things can and will go wrong in transportation. And the best way to deal with those issues is to be the first to know about them. Now that we've covered that there weren't any fires from last night that we've got to put out first thing today, now we can move on to our next task. And that will be to call each of your customers to get up to speed on what they'll need for the day. There may be loads that were scheduled to pick up overnight that haven't. They may have needed to shift their loading schedule since you spoke to them last. Or it could just be a good morning phone call to confirm the loads you have scheduled for this morning are still confirmed. Remember, the role of a freight broker is to be an extension of your customers into the market. You are their access to the market, so you should be updating them on relevant market information. And over time, these simple phone calls will go a long way in establishing more trust and rapport. So make sure you're adding value. Now, in real life, it will take weeks or months of relationship building phone calls to establish a solid customer relationship. With you running their problem or issue loads from here and there until they become comfortable enough to trust you with their consistent freight. This isn't gonna happen in three or four calls. It will take time and many of the loads will require tough negotiations. So stay focused and you'll be there before you know it. All right, now you have your load list from your customers for the day. What are we gonna do with it? Well, we'll need a place to put them, and that place is your TMS. So, we'll need to get these loads built or placed in the system, and then post these loads onto load boards, such as DAT. You'll wanna make sure you get these loads posted on the load boards as early as possible, because the empty and available trucks aren't gonna be around all morning. They're just as anxious to get rolling and earning money as you are. So get those loads posted and covered as soon as possible. Once your loads are posted, you'll be doing a mix of fielding incoming calls from carriers, as well as making outbound calls to drivers, carriers, and dispatchers. This is the second most important task for a freight broker. You can't earn any money without a customer, but you also can't move the customer's loads without a carrier. And without hauling a load, you also can't earn any money. So learning how to sell loads to carriers is every bit as important as it is to build a relationship with a shipper or your customers. Now, the amount of time you'll spend covering loads will fluctuate from day to day, depending on the amount of customers you have and the amount of loads they'll be trusting you with. Some days this may take two to three hours or more just calling and selling to cover loads. Some days, none at all. Now next, and this isn't set in stone either, but you should likely be prospecting after you've covered your loads. Now the time of day that you prospect should really vary with the different types of businesses you'll be calling on. Because some prospects, like a bakery for say, they tend to be open very early and that's a great time to reach a decision maker there. But some, some industries, you won't reach a decision maker until late afternoon. So try a lot of different times of day and vary your times of, or days of the week that you're actually also calling. Now that we're ready for some smiling and dialing, let's look at the numbers you're gonna be calling for today. 
Those phone numbers should have been prepared yesterday during your lead generation time. And that's a good place to start, is to start small when you be in. Don't set an unattainable goal for calling like 200 people in a day. There's no reward for blowing through calls just to prove that you can dial the most phone numbers. However, it is the biggest determining factor in your success or failure. It always is. Activity drives everything. And without adding customers, constantly and consistently, you won't make it in this industry. A good benchmark for newer brokers is four to five days a week and making at least 40 to 60 calls in each of those days. The key is to remain consistent and then to gradually increase your outbound calling numbers on a daily or weekly basis. You'll want to avoid burning out by calling 140 people today, but none for the rest of the week. Consistency is king here. This should take you about four to five hours per day around this stage of your career. And as the number of customers you have grows, you'll need to spend more time covering loads and less time securing new customers. So this will vary over your career. Next, we're gonna make check calls to all of our carriers that are over the road hauling our customers loads. We suggest you do this twice a day, once in the morning and again in the late afternoon. This should be done as a service to your carriers as well as your customers. Simply letting your customers know that you're on top of where their loads are is an important role of a freight broker. GPS does make this easier in a lot of cases, but it's not going to eliminate the need entirely as some truckers won't accept that GPS at all and some may accept it and then it may get turned off by accident or intentionally. Next, we're going to spend at least an hour or however long it takes to refill our lead list. That means replacing the numbers you contacted today that were either disconnected or you disqualified as a lead. And lastly, we should be contacting our customers again to update them on any trucks that have still not arrived that were supposed to, or to just update them that everything has been picked up and is loaded and rolling as scheduled. Making sure to request any changes to their load planning that may have received since you spoke to them last as well. And that's it. A day in the life of a freight broker. As we've said, the toughest aspects will be protecting your prospecting time while you're working on selling and covering your loads. A word of caution before we leave you, there will always feel like you have a good reason or excuse to avoid prospecting. Whether it's an urgent customer issue or you just don't plain feel like it today. The only people we've ever worked with, met or run into that have been successful in this industry are those that always find a way to get their calling activity in every day or every week, no matter what. Because remember, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. <laughs>